Real life, real stories. Let's see what's trending in Indianapolis. This is Paul Poteet on The Edge. <laughs> I always wait for those dance moves. I never know which one's going to come out. Uh, cheers. That's cheers. my. Oh. That's one of my grand grandpa mugs from. Uh, what are you drinking? Uh, well, uh, straight whiskey. No, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> Why does Grandpa smell? <laughs> no, Hi, Paul. Just the third, fourth cup of coffee. Don't be alarmed. Don't be alarmed. Hey, are we solo again today? We are. You and me. Mm. This might become a thing. We just don't know what's going to happen. I know. It's kind of sad to see the empty chair. That's too bad that we can't, like, just change the set for a couple of weeks and just physically sit me down next to you. No. Well, <laughs> you're allowed to come visit whenever you want. Yeah, that's true. Oh, all of a sudden, I'm the lazy one. Instead look, of Aaron. <laughs> look what you've done. <laughs> so what, do you, what do you have for us on the edge today? Turn me right around. I have a couple of interesting stories. First of all, people sometimes like to economize, especially at a young age. We all have heard of these millennials, you know, who, uh, you know, maybe don't have money for their own house. Maybe you want to have a roommate, but maybe you've never thought to have your spit analyzed before to find the perfect roommate. Whew. Thank goodness there's a company now that does that for you. Spare Room will analyze your DNA <laughs> to find a compatible roommate based upon <laughs> genetic markers for roommate compatibility 14 different traits spontaneity optimism confidence risk-taking self-awareness and stress tolerance well if i can tell you right now i'd be stressed to have to spit for somebody <laughs> right now the service is only available in the uk but they hope to launch it in the u.s later this year so forget craigslist <clears throat> just <laughs> these 14 things don't matter to me like i care about like do you make a lot of crumbs yeah right cleanliness do you snore can i hear you sleep well maybe this is self-selecting if you're the kind of person who will just you know give up their dna for strangers maybe i don't want to live with you <laughs> maybe you'd be doing it around maybe that's a red flag in and of itself <laughs> but did you know that so much could be derived from dna i guess i didn't realize that how can they tell how spontaneous you know your spontaneity and optimism and confidence just from that i don't no, and it's if we do 20, well, you and I and Aaron should all do t that. Is that 23 and me? Is that the deal? I believe, I believe so. Or they analyze your uh, DNA. But uh, yeah, 14 different traits. A chatty extrovert with high confidence might find she's suited to living with a more relaxed introvert. <laughs> the introvert would hate that, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Spare room if you want to Google it and uh, get more information. Interesting. Well, good luck, everyone. Yeah, a little bit of science there. This, I think, is kind of fascinating too. Yeah. It's uh, these identical twins. They're they're not they're not identical anymore. Speaking I saw that this is crazy, and I don't understand a bit of it, but it's interesting. What are the chances I could find two DNA stories for you on the edge? But I did. Mm -hmm. This was a NASA twin study. Scott Kelly was in space uh, for quite some time. And he has a twin, and I he had an identical twin. Dun dun dun! Seven percent of his genes did not return to normal after his return to Earth, and I don't mean they shrank in space. I mean his G E N E S, Brittany. G E N E S. He was aboard the International uh, Space Station, and they so they compared his results before and after with his identical twin, Mark, who remained on Earth. 7% of his DNA, get this, there are the two dudes right there. I don't know if that's before or after. I mean, they still, obviously, they look alike. But he's now taller, Scott Kelly, the astronaut, now taller than his twin. How much taller? I know, that's the first thing I thought of, too. What the heck, I love being an astronaut now. <laughs> So he ended up being taller as a result of being in space. Uh, that sounds great maybe to you, but also space flight is associated with oxygen deprivation stress, increased inflammation, and dramatic nutrient shifts that uh, affect gene expression. So yeah, you might be a little bit taller, but you might be a little more inflamed too, and that's mm. that's not good. And don't they always say a lot of things spring from too much inflammation, uh, health problems? I don't know who they are, but <laughs> those people. 
<laughs> you know, they, that's when you, when you've read stuff and you can't remember exactly where you're, that's what you say. You know what they say. Uh, interesting. <laughs> well, I wonder, I, I, why did that happen? What, what happened up there? Well, everything is, you know, the environment is so totally different. Uh, I don't quite get the whole, you know, how he is taller now. Things because of... Stre There's a stretching machine? They stretched him? Yeah, with a lack of gravity. That's what I always blame, you know, me losing. I mean, I've lost like a good half an inch, three quarters of an inch from uh, when I was in high school. Really? Headroom? Yeah, yeah, well, it's sad. It's very sad. You're, and, still, you're uh, still plenty tall, aren't you? Still, you're still tall. I think you're tall. I'm about 5'11 and a half. But, oh, uh, you, you read much taller than that. <laughs> well, I aim the camera a certain way. To, so there's always never very much headroom. At the, you know what? That's, that's like the biggest thing. Uh, the, if you wanted to know the FAQ, uh, what people say to me when, yes. uh, when they meet me in person, one of the first things I hear most of the time is, you're taller than I thought you would be. Really? I always think, well, what you have nothing to go by when you <laughs> see on TV because usually it's the same shot because it's the chroma right. key thing and everybody kind of gets framed the same way. But you're taller than that. <laughs> I, wait, I what do you say? Thank, thank you. Or <laughs> I'm sorry. Or <laughs> I usually just say, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the way they aim the cameras. Well, if I went into space for a year and came back and joined you, uh, We'd have to re-aim this camera here because right. you know, I could get back to high school. <laughs> that's, that's funny. Wouldn't it be awesome if you, you know, if you uh, were like younger? I don't know if they've done tests like to compare him with his identical twin. To you know, is he you know younger or is his you know body? I would think there's more stress being. I would imagine, but then again, what do we know? Yeah, if you were just in space all the time, but it's the getting to space, <laughs> coming back, it's that whole launch thing and, you know, yeah. and splashdown. That that part seems to be, you know how they always say the roughest part of air travel is the takeoff and the landing, right? Or the most, you know, maybe the most dangerous part. Once you're cruising, you're fine at 30,000 feet. So I would say it's the same thing, the space station. It's the it's that whole launch, <laughs> that and, whole and, splashdown. And it's kind of yeah, rough. Yeah, the getting the home part. Jeez. Yeah, kind of rough on the body. So anyway, that's uh, story number two. Too, and we are heading into uh, the end of Lent, and this weekend is Easter Sunday. Got your sure. bonnet ready? <laughs> always, always got my bonnet ready. Are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> That'll add. That can add. You get the right hat. That adds two inches, man. <laughs> Well, here is a, uh, a story for the season. Baby Jesus has returned. <laughs> As oh. <laughs> Baby Jesus uh, statues are stolen nearly 90 years ago. Yeah, and that is that's a little more than a baby Jesus there, doesn't it? That looks like a like a five, six, seven, eight year old uh, Jesus. Uh, the statue was returned to a whole New minutes. Jersey church. Get this, almost ninety years after it was stolen. Wow. So, so the church, it wasn't the, the person who stole it who returned it, obviously. No, obviously. What um, the baby that was stolen from the church's nativity display in the early 1930s, the statue somehow came into this person's grandfather's possession, and the man never returned. Somehow it came into granddad's possession. What a mystery. <laughs> And the man <laughs> never returned it. Instead, this is the person uh, talking. Instead, he gave it to my mother after she was married, and she too kept it until her passing when it came to me. Why are we hoarding baby Jesuses? <laughs> Quit hoarding. <laughs> this should be shared. As a matter of fact, they call it, there's a phrase for that, the Great Commission. You should share Jesus with uh, everyone. <laughs> but they were hoarding uh, baby Jesus. And so she said, knowing the story, I felt it should be returned to the rightful owner, and you will find it enclosed. <laughs> And uh, the people at the church said they took the note on good faith and faith and welcomed <laughs> welcomed baby Jesus back into the church. <laughs> the plaster statue is in great condition after those 80 years with only a chip on the bottom. And uh, they've traced it back to Crystal Springs, Florida, of course. Florida. Obviously, we know what happens in Florida. <laughs> the parish has been in existence since the 19th century, has old statues and relics and storage, uh, but they're not sure that they have any other parts of the nativity scene that actually correspond to the, the one that they stole baby Jesus from back in the 1930s. Well, it was the Depression uh, when people did crazy things. <laughs> like 
to hold baby Jesus. <laughs> I would just think that that's like the last thing I would steal. I would be looking, you know, <laughs> I would be my own lightning detector after that. Makes you, you wonder, would... how did the person who stole that die? How... <laughs> Right. That's that's what the story has left out. Yeah. Let your imagination run wild there. <laughs> well, a happy uh, Easter uh, weekend to all. And those are some of the stories. Really, you should consider a bonnet maybe for next week's show. Just, you know. <laughs> I have worn bonnets before for Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to get up. <laughs> All right, I'll put on my stovepipe hat or something and come back and find some more stuff for you on the edge. As far as weather goes, it's kind of a mixed bag, unfortunately. I think we're going to not really see sunshine <laughs> at any point ever again. Uh, a few stray showers linger into Wednesday morning, rain likely after midnight into Thursday. Shower chances return Saturday afternoon and rain and there could be some snow mixture. I know, I'm really sorry. I just report it. Don't be mad at me. Uh, more rain and snow showers Monday night. Eventually, I figure we're just going to go directly into April showers and maybe we'll see sunshine by June. So just hang in there, everybody.